ahead on NFL Prime Time. All the makings of a head knocker at the dog pound. The most talented young passer in the game, facing the veteran who has never lived up to expectations. The coach whose career has grown into legend against the assistant who had beaten him two months before. But Bledsoe wasn't perfect, and then he refused to go away. Did the Cinderella Patriots pull one out at the kennel? The story in many was the return of number one and the rematch of a regular season overtime classic. The NFC Coach of the Year stands in the way of Moon's March to Miami. Pound for pound, the best highlights in football. Playoff prime time. Once again, everybody, I'm Chris Berman. Happy New Year to everybody, and welcome to Wild Card Edition Day 2 of NFL Primetime. We began the weekend with 12. Now we're down to eight teams. That's what happened when you turn the calendar from 94 to 95. But we bring it first time on Primetime. Fit at them. You nervous, Rook? Absolutely. Well, I tell you what, though. We got some guys here that you may recognize to make you feel more at home when we go to highlights of the Good. first game. All right, let her rip here. Pair of games. Two teams who hadn't been to the playoffs since the 80s, New England and Cleveland, met at the dog pound. Two coaches, of course, quite familiar to each other. Bill Parcells, Bill Belichick. Belichick is longtime defensive coordinator with the New York Giants. That combination was 8-3 and three lifetime into the playoffs going into this game. Also, two quarterbacks making their first playoff start ever. Vinny Testaverde, the veteran. Drew Bledsoe, the sophomore sensation for the Patriots. Patriots had won seven straight. Their last loss was to Belichick's Browns on this very field. Could the assistant turn the tables on the Masters again? Here we go. Bill Parcells looking to knock off Bill Belichick. Oh, that's not the Natalie clad Bill Belichick. Bill was warmly clad. Tell you who looked warm as Vinny Testaverde hits. <laughs> there you go, Phil, to Michael Jackson, 27 yards. Then the fake reverse, and the youngster, Derek Alexander, is wide open. Sets up a Stover field goal, 3-0 Cleveland first quarter. Earlier this year, Cleveland picked off Drew Bledsoe four times. Bledsoe said not this time, as he hit Vincent Ultimate Brisby across the middle. Then on the blitz, Bledsoe hits his main man, the leading receiver of the AFC, Ben Winter Coates, unbuttons his way down the 14-yard line, Phil. Chris, anytime you blitz the Patriots, you're going to single up Ben Coates, and here you see it's just hard to cover, one-on-one. -on -one. All right, so two plays later, Bledsoe early second quarter to Leroy Thompson. Don Griffin, 28, tries to make a tackle, but whee! Into the end zone, 7-3, Peeman! Testaverde, though, was on. He goes back to <laughs> Michael Jackson. Had a big day, seven catches for a buck 22. Then, Vinny, first and goal. It's an all Buccaneer play. Gets away from Mike Pitts. Vinny to Mark Carrier, who beats Ricky Reynolds for the touchdown. The Browns with the lead. Vinny shows good poise here. He breaks the pocket. Nobody's open. Draws Ricky Reynolds up to him. Lost the ball nice and solidly for the touchdown to Mark Carrier. So the Brown fans know that their team has the lead. They forced the punter, have they? Pat O'Neill gets creamed, but on the fake punt, it's Corwin Brown wide open. Phil, you said Parcells will pull out all the stops. Well, we knew he wouldn't be afraid to take risks, especially early in the game, and here you see the fake punt works just like he wanted to. Now, second half, Al Groh. His defense has not allowed a second half touchdown in the second uh, the last five games. Third quarter, they forced the turnover. Eric Metcalf on the run. Was his knee down? No, it wasn't. Mike Pitts recovers. But uh, since the offense on this series was the Pitts, they had to punt, and Metcalf got out of it. Now, Testaverde rolls right. Dumps it to Leroy Hort. Watch him measure up and boom! Although he had to leave for a couple of plays after the hit. Then, second and goal from the 10. Leroy Hort barrels his way in. Hort at 66 yards, and the Browns have the 17 to 10 lead. Fourth quarter, Patriots driving. Bledsoe picked off by Pepper Johnson. Shakes it up. Peppa, Peppa. What happened? Well, the Browns knew he'd love to go to Ben Coates. Here, Pepper Johnson, even in zone coverage, looks up Ben, makes the interception. Brown's defense trying to take advantage. Matt Stover from 49 yards, but Matt the toe Stover is way right. Bledsoe off the hook. Still a seven-point get. Bledsoe with another chance. But watch what happened. Doink! Off Kevin Turner into Eric Turner. Gets a block from Leonard Turner and Tina Turner. And 
Another interception for the man that had nine right here. Right here, Chris. Short pass. He just throws it way too hard off of Kevin Turner's hands. Eric Turner's lucky. After the interception, watch what happened to Bledsoe. Dan Footman, boom! Sometimes you pay for those things, Phil. You remember those days. That leads to a field goal that's 20 to 10. Parcells Patriots, though, they've come back so often. Bledsoe, Ben Winter coach, unzips for 13 yards. Then Bledsoe going for all of it. To Ray Crittenden. Can he make the catch? Oh, he just can't catch the critter. He misses it by about six inches on fourth down. Matt Barr, can you make a 44-yard field goal then? I don't think so, Coach. All right, I'll tell you what. We're down 10. Let's go for it. And the Patriots have gone for it on fourth down more than anybody all year long. Bledsoe, Brisby, first down. What a throw by Bledsoe. What a throw. Here you see great protection, and it's nice to be young and have a good arm like this. Squeeze it in between three defenders. So the Patriots' dream is still alive. Bledsoe looking to the end zone for Michael. Tips it. Oh, just tips off his fingertips. Minute and a half to go. Matt Barr, 33 yards. Good. And the former Brad kick. Now it pulled it to within 7, 20 to 30. Watch this onside kick. One is going out of bounds. This is as good as it gets, folks. They set up a picket fence, and the Patriots recovered, Phil. Chris, I've never seen an onside kick like this in my, in my career. He kicks it behind the Patriot players. They go down, turn around. Perfect execution of an onside kick. So, down by seven points, minute 28 to go. Bledsoe goes to his main man, Ben Winter Coates, for eight yards. Then, Bledsoe to Leroy Thompson. Close to midfield, first down. Throws out of bounds to stop it with nobody open. Complete to Hart Modell. Second down, Bledsoe to Timpson. Oh, but he can't hold on. On third down, Bledsoe behind Crittenden. He fired it too hard. So fourth down, Belichick, Parcells. They knew it would come down to this. 43 seconds to go. And here's a guy with a big arm, and he short arms it on fourth downs. Bill Parcells knows his team is young, and they'll be back. They'd won seven in a row, but on this day, it was Vinny that was moving on. The dog pound fired up. And Parcells with Banks and Pepper and Belichick after the game. All of them friends, all of them competitors on this day. The Cleveland Browns win the playoff game and move on by the count of 20 to 13. Vinny Testaverde, the story in the game, 20 of 30 for 268. Hit Jackson and Alexander as two outside receivers for 12 for almost 200 yards. Afterwards, Vinny relieved. Well, it's certainly the biggest game of my career. Uh, next week will be even a bigger one, but uh, you know I'm satisfied with the way I played and with the way the team played. In the past, with everything that has happened with Vinny around here, that uh, maybe he would get flustered and he get pressure, he would throw the ball away. But today, Vinny stood in there strong and he made something happen. Even even though usually that's when everything goes wrong when you're trying to make something happen, and he did that today. He took his chances at doing that, and it and it worked. I've had a lot of confidence in Vinny since he's been here. He's made a lot of big plays for us. Uh, you know, like every other player, he's not perfect or any other coach. Uh, he makes mistakes, but. You know, we're 11 and 5 in the regular season. He's 1 and 0 in the playoffs. I, you know, I think that record speaks for itself. You know, he's been a big part of it. We just didn't play with the same fire and emotion that we had played with the last seven weeks. But at the same time, uh, you know, they just outplayed us. I see it as progress. I think our team made progress. Um, I think we're a better team than we were last year at this time. And. Uh, but we, we don't get to go on. So, you know, we're not playing this to, to, to progress. We're playing to try to be champions. That's what we want to try to be. Boy, it's tough to win out. They'd won seven in a row. This is their third straight road game. The Patriots certainly can hold their heads high. But two quarterbacks who had never played in the playoffs before, Phil, a youngster and a veteran. And really, there was probably was more pressure on Testaverde, and he stepped up. Didn't yeah, he? I think so. And I'll tell you what, Vinny Testaverde was very impressive today. He showed poise. He waited in the pocket, let the receivers come open down the field. He never, his decision-making was excellent. He never got close to throwing an interception. And when they did get pressure on him, he moved out of the pocket and made, took negative plays and made them into positive. Then it, Vinny Testaverde was definitely the difference in this football, football game today. And as for Bledsoe, when his main man was coming, I know Coates caught six for 79, so for most days, that's a heck of a job. But a couple were in that last drive. Again, they frustrated him trying to find his main guy. And that kind of threw him off rhythm, I think, a little bit. What yeah. did Cleveland do, Phil? Well, I'll tell you what. I thought Drew Bledsoe came out, and he was a little nervous early, made some mistakes, but he was looking for Ben Coates, and the Cleveland Browns defense was determined not to let him beat him. You see here, he gets hit by Caldwell at the line of scrimmage. Pepper Johnson and Stevon Moore, a safety, look him up to make sure he doesn't get the catch. Here the Cleveland Brown defense blitzes. Coach gets off free. He's still double teamed by the linebacker stands and Turner the safety. 
Even when they played zone coverage today, Pepper Johnson looks him up, makes sure he doesn't get the catch, and I'll tell you what, they did, a, they did a great job of taking away Ben Coach from Drew Bledsoe, and I thought that just killed the whole New England passing game. Well, you know that Belichick knows what he's doing in scheming defenses, and check this out. Now, two games, you start to get a trend, at least this year, as we go inside the numbers. Two games against the Browns, Bledsoe hit Coates nine times. Two games against the Browns, Bledsoe hit Cleveland defenders seven times. That's some serious pass defense. And the main reason, in addition to the fact that they held the Patriots to 57-yard rushing, that the Browns are moving on and the Valiant Patriots are moving out. When we return, the fourth part of this weekend's puzzle, the always humorous Norris division. Warren Moon, would he be okay? Or would the Bears finally break through against the Vikes? Stick around. Yeah. NFL Primetime is brought to you by Logo Athletic. Get real with authentic team apparel. Coming up next, hey, who cares? It's a different fruit. We've got the Peach Bowl and the big Mississippi State offensive line, which averages 321 pounds. That's a lot of peaches. Mississippi State against NC State. Coming up at the top of the air, Joel Myers and Tom Blackledge on the call. We're on the call here next on the Vikes Bears. Steve Walsh. It's interesting to see how he gets it done for the Bears. Well, these pre to a uh, wild card edition of NFL Primetime. Well, another round of Norris Division action. Green Bay, Detroit yesterday, Chicago at Minnesota today. Dennis Green, 6-0 against the Chicago Bears lifetime, but the last one came in overtime week 14 at home on the same field as this game was on. So that gave the Bears hope. Could they close the gap just one month later? Could they close it enough to finally win? Warren Moon, how was his leg? Well, he was starting today. Dave wants that looking to break through finally against the Vikes. Minnesota's first drive, you got to throw to a smart guy. So, Moon to Steve Jordan from Brown University. You're hired, Phil. <laughs> Six yard gain. Then, third and long. Moon showing his knee okay, although I think for a while he was uncertain about it. Warren scrambles for seven yards, but the Vikings have to punt it away. Bears in the, the three-yard line, the second play from scrimmage, and oh no, the Bears always turn it over against the Vikings. Ed McDaniel puts his shoulder into Lewis Tillman. Oh, that's Giants today. Get him out of here. Loose ball. McDaniel recovers. Vikings ball at the three. Second goal, Terry Allen. It's a touchdown, but holding on the play. Yeah, as you'll see the replay here, you'll see center Jeff Christie clearly wraps up. Chris Sortage around the waist. Result, no touchdown. So they take the touchdown back. The Vikings move back to the 12. And Fouad Revez, whose last miss was about 1983, is good from 29 yards out, and it's 3-0 Vikings. Bears next drive at midfield. Again, they've seen this before. Walsh fades back, puts it up for grabs, and Anthony Parker makes the interception. And here we go again. The Bears trouble against the Vikes. Yeah, Steve Walsh under pressure, lets the ball go a little too long off Jay Lewenberg's helmet. Result, interception. But Minnesota did not score with this, so they squandered two golden opportunities, literally 3-0. Later in the quarter, Walsh gets it going. The screen to Lewis Tillman, upfield for nine yards. Then on third and five, Walsh to Curtis Cummins. Nice-looking throw and a good tackle by Del Rio, but it's a 10-yard gain. Bears now moving early, second quarter, same drive. Spreading it out as Walsh to Raymond Harris and the rookie down to the four-yard line. Then Jim Flanagan, the defensive tackle, the lead blocker. Lewis Tillman in, and the Bears lead it 7-3. Minnesota is driven out of the 29-yard line. Moon's pass through the hands of Kadri Ismail, picked up by Barry Minter. So neither team really taking good care of the football, Phil. Chicago driving. Walsh looks deep to Jeff Graham. Makes a move and crackers his way up for 55 yards down to the 15-yard line. To cap the drive, now Walsh feeling comfortable. The play fake sells the Vikings on it to Keith Jennings. Nice pass, 14-3, Chicago. Late in the half, Dennis Green's Vikings trying to come back. Warren Moon to the best defensive player of the day for Minnesota, amply, and he does it amply. He just breaks tackles. He's almost impossible to tackle when he's on. 38-yard gain down to the 8-yard line. 
Dan Moon. All he does is catch touchdowns. Chris Carter. All he does is set records. All he does is get the Vikings back in the game with the TD. And you see him right here. Warren Moon throws the ball in a good spot where only Chris Carter can catch it in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. But Warren Moon just 80 yards throwing in the first half. Do you think the Vikes have the momentum? And on the Bears' first drive of the third quarter, Raymond Harris. Where's the middle of the Viking defense? The vaunted middle of the defense. Harris, 30 yards, touchdown, 21-9 Chicago. The Vikings have their work cut out for him. Dennis Green knows. So we give it to Amp Lee, the former Niner, the former Florida Stater. Look at the moves. 11 catches, 159 yards for Amp Lee. This is a 37-yard gain. Moon sidelines to Chris Carter but a beautiful catch he's going out of bounds Phil yeah and Chris is that the replay shows he drags both feet in catches them makes a catch they ruled it incomplete good play by Chris Carter but the incompletion makes it third and long Moon goes to the end zone the Bears have a very good secondary one of them Mark Carrier makes the fingertip deflection. Minnesota settles for a field goal at 21 to 12. Early fourth quarter. Dennis Green on the phones looking for his defense, but Walsh finding Jeff Graham, 22 yards. Pretty play inside the pylon, 28 to 12, Chicago. Moon tries to rally the Vikes to Ismail for 15 yards. The Bears have had the lead in this stadium, going to the fourth quarter the last three times, only to lose all of them. Moon to Carter, and this will go down to the 15-yard line, and Moon hung in there on the play, Phil. I tell you, did. A bad knee. He hangs in there. They got him around the ankles, and look what he still completes the pass. Moon okay. Now watch him take it himself. Whoop. Yeep. Hit around Spellman. Get a block. And 11 yards to Ampley. Touchdown. 28-18. Vikings within 10. But with fourth and five with three minutes to go, Vikings need more action. They go to Amp Lee. He is nailed. Kevin Minifield picks it up. And sweet revenge. The Vikings score defensive touchdowns against the Bears. Today, the Bears cap it off with a defensive touchdown against the Vikes. That six-game losing streak goes by the boards. Dennis Green's team has made the playoffs all three years that he's been there with three different quarterbacks. But alas, they've lost their first playoff game all three times. Chicago with Dave Wanstatt doing a continued brilliant job. The Bears 35, the Vikings 18. Steve Walsh, a very workmanlike 15 of 23 for 221, a pair of touchdowns, and the Bears and Walsh moving on. We started off a little rough. Uh, we always seem to start off slow against these guys, but we picked it up, really had, had three great quarters of football. Everybody in the world is amazed, except for the players on this team. We said, Coming into this season, and when we came into camp, we said we're looking at the playoffs, and when we get to the playoffs, we're looking to win in the playoffs. And I guess everybody just kind of let that go in one ear and out the other. But um, we meant it, and that's all that matters. Well, the Chicago Bears now move on to San Francisco next weekend, and we'll set up all the playoffs for you a little bit later here in primetime. Those two turnovers early, Phil, which the Vikings, that's how they've always beaten the Bears. They get only three points out of it. And then Steve Walsh steps up. He really, he was the better quarterback today, was he not? No, Steve Walsh. I think he went into the game under a lot of pressure. Dave Wanstead, they've been criticizing that Chicago offense. Get the ball down the field because defense has been drawn up closer to the line of scrimmage. Well, today he did that. He threw the ball down the field effectively. And once again, Chris, he made good decisions. But let's go to both defenses here, Phil. First, Minnesota. What happened to this defense that at the, for half the season was either number one or number two uh, in overall D? The, the guys in the middle of the field, I mean, the Bears were scoring touchdowns, not field goals. Yeah, that's right. And I tell you, you hate to say this, but the Minnesota defense since the beginning, uh, middle of the year, they've struggled because everybody tries to block Randall and Thomas inside. Today, they were effective early, but once Chicago got them under control, Steve Walsh had plenty of time, a young secondary for Minnesota. It's easy to get down the field on them. Meanwhile, Phil, Chicago's defense, two interceptions, two fumble uh, recoveries, one of them for the touchdown at the end by midfield. You know, outside of the secondary, they don't have what you call great marquee players, but it seems like they know exactly what they have and maybe more important what they don't have and they play under wraps and wants that as not playing with confidence. Well he really does. He's doing what he just he did down in Dallas. He's got a defense that goes back there. They don't make mistakes and if you want to move the ball the score touchdowns it takes eight or ten plays and most of the time you have to throw the ball underneath. They react, come up, hit you and it's just hard to score touchdowns against them. Well an opportunistic defense usually will win games. You know that better than I do as we go inside the numbers and Dave wants that two-year tenure in Chicago in the 17 wins that he's had, including today and the four turnovers today, 
The in the 17 wins, the Bears have 41 takeaways. In the 16 losses, they have only 15 takeaways. Add it up for today, Man of W. When we return, game balls. Is it an omen for this evening for the Orange Bowl? Miami quarterbacks looking pretty impressive. We'll dole out the game balls. Look at next week's round of the playoffs in a moment. You played all day. You gotta have playoffs. Up in the best round in the NFL. And on Saturday, 11.30 game day, 7.30 prime time. Sunday, a usual noon kickoff game day, 7.30 prime time. Game ball time. Well, it's obvious, but come playoff times, hate to admit it, Phil, but the quarterbacks are pretty important. And Steve Wall shrugged off the two early intercept, uh, two early turnovers. This throw to Jennings was a touchdown. And then Wall signals Jeff Graham. Steve Walsh knowing he could have gotten yanked at any moment as Kramer took some snaps this week, playing with that hanging over his head, playing with 0-6 against the Vikings hanging over his head. Steve Walsh, Miami quarterback, gets my game ball. And you, sir. Well, to no surprise, I'm picking a quarterback, too. Vinny Testaverde, you see him here going down the left sideline, down the field outside to Michael Jackson. Something he did very well today. Good presence here. Scrambles out of the pocket, draws the defense to him, lays it in for a touchdown to Mark Carrier. Bennett Testaverde today had the game of his life, 20-30, 268 yards, one touchdowns, and more importantly, no interceptions. We'll be back. MCI presents the AT&T True-False Quiz. True or false? AT&T always saves you money. False. Million. It's almost four. Now we'll make it. find time to paint. We promise. That's why Spread Satin is formulated to cover the first time, so you can finish in less time. Glidden, a better way to paint. MCI presents the AT&T True-False Quiz. True or false? Every AT&T customer saves with True USA. False. 20 million will save simple. It just doesn't ring true. NFL Trap Chat is brought to you by McDonald's. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. So here we are next week in the playoffs. Saturday, early game, Cleveland at Pittsburgh. 17-10, 17-7, Pittsburgh earlier this year. This will be a head knocker. Chicago at San Francisco. David, as it wants that, against Goliath. That's the Saturday games. Sunday, rematch of the Thanksgiving game and last year's playoff game, both won by Dallas. Green Bay at Dallas early. Miami at San Diego. That's the late game in the Murph. Miami doused San Diego at Miami two years ago in the playoffs. First things first, Phil, in the NFC, it looks like two on paper. The Norris teams going up into Dallas and San Francisco. We don't want to douse water on what both Green Bay and Chicago did. It'll be tall orders for both teams, although the Packers feel that, that maybe they can keep Dallas on their heels. Could you see either of these teams struggling? Well, I think Green Bay was looking forward to getting the chance to go back down to Dallas. Last time they played down there, they did real well on offense. They scored a lot of points, but what disappointed them is they gave up all those big plays to the Dallas Cowboy offense and their backup quarterback. I think they like their chances going down to Dallas. Quickly, Cleveland-Pittsburgh. Tough a head knocker three times. Can Pittsburgh beat the Browns? Well, can Pittsburgh beat? I don't know. I think yeah. I think Cleveland can beat Pittsburgh this time. They go in if they can pick up the blitz like they did last time they played. Vinny Testaverde, if he can take advantage of the opportunities down there this week, they have a chance to beat Pittsburgh. And in the Miami San Diego game, it'll be Arn Sparger against Shula. Can uh, San Diego's defense hold Marino in check? And can Means get the running game going? But we'll have plenty to talk about on game day and prime time next week. Thanks for watching for Phil Sims. I'm Chris Berman. Thanks for watching. Happy New Year, everybody. We hope you've enjoyed the programs. The Peach Bowl is next. NC State, Mississippi State coming up with Joel Myers and Todd Blackledge. Good night, everybody. Thanks, Chris. Well, we've got a capacity crowd at the Georgia Dome. It should be a great matchup between two teams with identical records. This is the Revco Sports Extra with sports director Jeff Phelps. Sponsored by Revco, a friend for life. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Revco Sports Extra. The starting pitching has been a problem, and at times the hitting has needed a little bit of help.
But while a lot of Indian fans were worrying as of late, the Indians were winning. They had won four of their last five games. They were back at 500 for tonight's game in Milwaukee. But don't you know, Oral Hershiser did not expect the run support he had tonight. In the fourth inning, no score. Matt Williams, the batter for the Indians, who, by the way, looks way, way too much like my high school golf coach from Woodridge High, Don McKee. Don't, don't you think, everybody? Anyway, fourth inning, no score in this game, at least until Matt Williams hits this. His second home run of the year, it was one to nothing. A batter later, Manny Ramirez. How about two to nothing, Indians. Still in the fourth inning, a man on base, Chad Curtis, four to nothing Indians. It was four to three in the sixth. Dave Justice, five to three Indians in the lead. In the seventh inning, Matt Williams, who did I mention looks way too much like Don McKee, my high school golf coach, already one home run, how about two? That's number five for the Indians tonight. Next up, Dave Justice, number six for the Indians. Dave second of the game, it was eight to four. In the eighth, Matt Williams, his third home run of the game. First time he's ever done that in his major league career. Coach is so proud. In the ninth inning, Sandy Alomar sets a new Indians team record. Eight home runs in the game tonight. Indians have fun in Milwaukee. They are over 500. They beat up the Brewers 11 to four. Tonight's game will be especially fun to watch, maybe more than tonight, because Bartolo Colon gets another chance in the starting rotation. He was 2-0 and in two starts at AAA Buffalo, and he's been called up to start against the Brewers. Damian Jackson on his way back to Buffalo. We can see the game here at seven o'clock.